Okay, folks, let's get started. Time to roll that saw blade sign. Welcome back to the shop that's not the shop. In this video, we're going to do something a little different for you, a little more informative. I hope you get something out of this. we got the number one shop helper here with us, always here with us helping. But what we're going to do in this episode, this video, is I'm going to show you how to hang this television on this wall with one of these brackets that you can buy from Amazon. Now, we went with the most economical one we could find, but yet made sure it was sturdy. We're not advocating this one. We're not saying this is the only one to buy. We're just telling you this is the one we bought. And so I'm going to show you how to hang the thing up. Now, so the way the story goes is, Lisa said to me, Vernon, I think we should hang that television up on that wall. And I said, well, give me a day or two to think about it, and we'll, we'll come up with something. So fast forward two years, we're going to hang a television on the wall. So that's about how fast I make changes in the household. At any rate, you're going to get a bunch of stuff when you get this thing, <clears throat> a bunch of doodads and things, and they're going to want you to hang this bracket, this mounting bracket, up on the wall. Let me show you what they want you to use. And I guess it would be okay for some, but I'm not mounting a $500 television on the wall <clears throat> with those little plastic expansion shields and hoping that it doesn't fall off the wall and smash and destroy itself. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to go about putting that thing on the wall, and I know it won't fall down. I'm going to show you how to compensate for when you don't know where the studs are in the wall. We're going to pretty it up. We're going to make it a little more functional. And I'm going to add a little doodad on the side, I think, to hold the remotes for at the end of the night when you want to put them away because nobody likes looking for the remotes when they're hidden in the couch cushions. All right, so first thing you do is you'll get the mounting plate out. This is your mounting plate. It mounts to the wall through these holes. They want you to attach it, like I said, with those plastic things. And these lag bolts, and I'm okay with the lags, but I'm not using them at plastic expansion shields. And then what you'll do is you'll come over here and you'll figure out how high you want the thing. That's arbitrary, personal preference, if you will. And then you would necessarily, not necessarily, you would need to locate the studs in that wall. Now, I don't have a stud finder. I'm not going to go buy one. I'm going to try to show you how to do this so that you don't have to spend a fortune to hang this thing on the wall. <clears throat> maybe you're a college student, maybe you're a young person, an old person, it doesn't matter. You just want to get your TV elevated off the floor, and you don't want to spend a fortune doing it. I don't know what that thing was. Lisa, how much was that thing? 20 bucks? 30 bucks. $30. So for $30 plus a few other little doodads, we'll get this done and show you how to do it. Okay, so in the box, you'll find two of these. Now these things, they go on the back of the TV. I've already put one on. Let me spin this around and show you. Normally this cabinet that you've probably seen before in some other videos, we built this during a, a contest with Bucky's Customs, and we decided to drop the contest connotation and just do it for fun. And this is the project I made. You can check that out in an earlier video. So anyway, let me spin this television around if I don't drop it on the ground here and show you where we're at here. All right, so there's one. I've already put it in. And what you'll see on the back of your television is two hole, four holes that will accept the correct size bolt. In that bag of doodads, there's various bolts and nuts and screws that you need to find to determine what size those holes are. Now, I've already done that. I've got these guys, obviously, because I've already put one on. So this is a locking bolt that goes on the back on the bottom side. Now, this, we put the screw through. Grab your trusty 11 million in one. It's really only a six in one. They call it that because it's six tools in one. Take that out, take that out, it flips over, etc., etc. Maybe you've seen that, but and a Phillips head in this case, and you put this one on like so. I do the top one because it's just easier. That way this hangs, and you can locate that hole without fighting trying to hold it and put the screw in all at the same time. So we put the screw in the bottom one. Like so, snug it up. Don't push your television off the table you're using. You know, don't go like this and throw it off the floor. 
Let me make sure these guys are tight still. They are. Now when it comes time to mounting this thing on the wall, we're going to take the space off, and that's a Phillips head screw right here. That will take this off. And if need be, I can pull these screws to give me a tighter clearance. All right, so let me just show you this piece. Once it's mounted on the wall, you'll notice there's an arrow there that says up. So this would sit on the wall this way. We're going to reverse this a little bit so you can see what's going to happen. What you're going to do is take your television and lock it into this like that. Now your television will hang on the wall. You'll tighten these little lock nuts up, little lock screws, and it won't fall off. But that's, that's jumping way too far ahead of the game. I just wanted to show you how it's going on there. So... We need to figure out how high we want it. We've already done that. And I don't know where the studs are in that wall. I know there's studs here and here on each side. I know they're there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the local big blue box store or the big orange one, and I'm going to buy myself one, one by eight by six. I don't know what I do with my tape measure, but I've already measured this wall, and I know it's under six feet just under six feet. Now that board I'm going to put up is going to go from here to here, accepting the stud that I know is here and here and here and here. Now I don't know where they are in the middle, and I don't know if I can line this bracket up to those studs, but I definitely need to hit a stud if I don't put that board on. If I put the board in, there's no way this thing's coming off the wall once that board's on and I run these through into that board. So, we don't know where the studs are, we're back to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little trick that you can use sometimes to help you locate a stud if you want to hang a picture or whatever. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut it here and then we're going to go into the kitchen and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Okay folks, so here's that side of the wall. Now I'm swinging around to this side. I'm running the camera, so bear with me. I'm not much of a cameraman. And you can see there's cabinets mounted on the back side of this wall. Now in order to hang those cabinets, the construction worker, contractor, had to find studs. Otherwise, those cabinets would fall off your wall. They would just not hold with all the weight that you're putting in them. So I've got my trusty ladder here, and I'm going to show you the trick that I'm talking about. If you get up on your ladder, and you look at the top side of your cabinets, you will see a hidden screw right there, right there, and right there. That is where the studs are in your wall. And that will work any time you have a wall that divides two rooms if you want to figure out where your studs are. Now what I'll do is I'll grab my tape measure and I'll figure out where that wall screw is off the corner of this wall. And I'll make a mark, write it down, whatever I have to do to remember that number. And I'll do the same thing for the middle one and the same thing for that one over there. And we'll catch you from that one. So I've taken the measurements, and what I do is I try to draw things as if they are, as if I'm looking at them. So here is my wall on my paper. Let me bring this in. There. There is my wall. I make my marks or my indications exactly as I'm looking at the wall so I don't get confused. I measured the screws on the other side. The first one's at 17, the second one 32 and 3 quarters, the third one at 48 and a quarter. Now, I've already transferred those marks, and some people would look at me and go, you wrote on your wall with a Sharpie? Well, we're going to cover it, so we're not worried. At any rate, here's the first stud, here's the second stud, the third stud, the fourth stud, and here is center. Okay? So let me show you my little mounting bracket thing and my dilemma, what I was talking about earlier, not being able to hit the studs with the mounting bracket. Now, I'm going to hold this a little bit up above those, so you can see where the holes in the bracket line up with the marks on the wall. All right. So like I said, these holes are where they want you to put those lag bolts in. 
air center. There's no stud there, but I want the TV in the center. So I would be able to pick up this stud here, here, and absolutely nothing anywhere else. And to me, that means when I put the TV on, it's going to be one of these numbers. And we're not going to have that. So we're going to go out to the shop, and I'm going to make a board. I'm going to pretty it up, and I'm going to show you how we do that. And then I'm going to show you how we put it on the wall, and we'll catch you from there. Okay, folks, so here we are out at the shop, and here's the board. Just an ordinary 1x8, 6 foot long. And now I know, because I measured the wall, and I know that I want to have a three-quarter inch reveal on each side of the wall. A reveal means um, a little space left over so that this thing, the edge of this board isn't right on the edge of my wall. So what I've done is I've figured the distance of the wall. It's 58 and a half total. I'm going to make this thing 57 inches long. And we're going to cut it down and then we're going to start to pretty it up. I'm going to do this on Microsoft. Microsoft. You don't have one of these. Cover your ears. But now we're to the length we're looking for. And I'm going to dress up the outside edge all the way around. I may take out these corners. Let's see if I can do this for you. I may take these corners and put a scalloped edge on them. Or I may do something else. But you don't have to do all this stuff. You could sand this thing now, make it nice and smooth and add some paint and you would have yourself a mounting board but let's proceed and I'll do the, the cleanup and the fancy enough and because I got the tools I'm going to do it and show you So here's what we got, a little box that is screwed on so that you can put your remotes in, like so. Now this is a painting project, we're going to paint this up, and I don't expect you all to do this, I'm just showing you that you can fancy these up a little bit so that you can add little doodads here and there. This is a paint project, so we're going to employ some of this stuff. Let's see if I can get this so you can read it in the camera. Wood filler, wood filler. And all you do with that stuff is push it into the holes where the nails are. And them nails will disappear once the paint goes on it. You let this dry and then sand it out. And you will have a work of art. <laughs> I don't know about a work of art. But a functional piece of furniture. And you'll be able to have your television up in the air. Which was the total object of this video to begin with so aside from the extra nonsense that I'm doing here just to just to add a little woodworking to everything I try to do we'll paint this thing I'll show you that when it's painted and then we'll move on into the house and we'll show you how we get it all on the wall and get it done Are you recording? I'm recording. All right, cool. I've already shaken that for 20 minutes. All right. <laughs> okay, y'all, so you may have, have or may have not seen these easels that we make. There's another video for those, too. Anytime you're painting or doing a project, they make it a whole lot easier. So what I'm going to do, this is all-in-one spray paint. We're going to keep this as simple as we can. I'm going to spray paint this on. I'm not advocating this again, but if you do an all-in-one, it's a little easier. I've got the thing upside down at this point. I'm going to paint the bottom edge. Then I'm going to flip it over so that way it's on the, the easel and I know that I've got it painted. Now what you do, a certain distance, start your paint before you do it. Hold it a certain distance and move with a steady pace. One other time just to make sure. And now I'm going to flip it over. Let's see if I can't make a mess. Just like that. Try to put it on the edge. 
All right, so just easy coat. Let the paint do the work. Overlapping, steady, back and forth. Try to maintain the same speed. You should stay 90 degrees to what you're painting when you're painting with a sprayer or a can. Starting and stopping off of, you start your spray here, stop it here. I'm going to get the edge. I'm on the wrong side for the edge. I probably should have done the edges first. I make mistakes. That's all right. We will see the bottom side, obviously, so we want to make sure we get that all the way around on this this fancy box. And we'll continue from here, folks. We'll meet you in the house. All right, folks. Here we are back in the in the humble abode, the Hinkle House, the Casa de Hinkle. And we're going to continue where we started with this hanging this project up. Now, we got our board. It's all painted up and all fancy. As you can see, I've drilled some holes here up in the top. Let me get in a little bit. This is where the first two holes are going to go. And then I've got two more on the other side. Let's play Karate Man here and flip that around. i got two more here. Those are going to allow me to start to set the thing on the wall without it falling. Now, I went ahead and... I attached the bracket to the board and I did that with just ordinary short drywall screws. It'll make it easier for me to hold it and, and, and get it in the position I want. Now, I've also gone ahead and because I have the tools, I've put these blocks on. Now these are called ledger blocks. If you had one across, it'd be called a ledger board. I want to show you that you can do this alone if you have to. My wife would be helping me, but she's running the camera. Um, you can get a buddy to help you, you know, your friend, to hold it in place so that you can put the first screws in. Now, let me grab a couple of screws. Now, these screws happen to be green, which is unfortunate. I wish they were black, but what this, that means is we'll put the screws in, put it in place, and then we'll go back through with some touch-up paint, and we'll just dab it into these holes so that you don't see these god-awful-looking yellow holes in your black board. Now, this board as we said earlier, is going to extend from this side to this side, and I've shortened the board to give me a three-quarter inch reveal. Now that reveal, as I explained, is a little bit of space between the wall and the edge of this board. I've gone ahead and put the blocks up, and I've also made a mark on the end of my block to tell me um, where that three-quarter inch threshold is to put this in the middle. I've also gone ahead and made sure this is all level so it's not cattywampus. And then, again, I wanted to let you know that you don't have to buy all kinds of fancy tools. In that box, they give you this extremely large level that you can use <laughs> if you don't have a regular level. I know that's silliness, but they do give it to you. All right, so we're not going to use that level. We'll use a standard two-foot level. This one happens to be the Stanley version. It doesn't matter. It's a Hinkle level. All right. So we're going to go ahead and put this thing up on the wall. So you're also going to need, if you're like me, at a whopping five foot six, you're going to need a short person elevation device. So I have that device right here, also known as a footstool. All right. Get your drill. Okay, folks, so we have it on the wall, and we are now going to remove those ledger blocks. We don't need them any longer, so we can take them off. I'm sure my wife likes these decorative clamps on her wall. Let me get the other one here. Let me go around this way. Come off of there. 
there you. There we go. Okay, so you've got the thing on the wall. We know where the studs were. We marked it out. We're going to put two more screws, <clears throat> one on each of the studs that we know is hidden in the wall. All right, I'll go ahead and do that, and we'll pick it up from when I get that done. Okay, folks, so when I went to put the other screws in, I realized I made a mistake. And I'm human, and I like to make sure I point out my mistakes so that you don't think I'm just covering everything up. Which is kind of ironic, because that's what I did. I covered up my markers for the other studs. But luckily, I have this, like I told you in the beginning, so I can find them. I'm going to put those screws in for you right now. So bear with me, and we'll catch you when I get it going. <clears throat> So what you're seeing me do here, folks, is <clears throat> I went out and got the spray can. I'm obviously not going to spray in the house. Covered the top with a paper towel and sprayed into the lid. So I've got paint in this lid, and I'm going back over the shiny stuff. Now, there's nothing that says you have to do this cover-up, except for maybe on the outside screws. I would highly recommend it. All of this stuff on the inside is going to be covered by the TV, so you wouldn't see it. I guess I'm just being a little fussy about it. I also went ahead, <clears throat> and as you can see, I've got extra screws in here. I took some short drywall screws and ran them in regardless of whether there was a stud there or not. Ran them in very slowly. It gives a little extra help. It's not a lot, but it gives a little bit. So you can or don't have to do that if you don't want to, but... I just, I'm kind of, I'm kind of fussy about things. I want as much insurance as I can get that this thing's not coming off the wall. Because with our luck, it'll come off the wall in the middle of the night. And then i got to go try to figure out what's happening. So let me get these painted up, and then we'll hang the TV. All right, y'all. The moment you've been waiting for to see if I can get a hernia putting this up here alone. <laughs> but... I do recommend you getting help to do this. So I've already did a little dry run. Let's see if I can pull it off again without having a problem. But, but this is proof you can do it alone. You can do it alone. When you get done, you won't have to go to the gym. Find the hook in the back. Let it roll forward. Let me see what we got. We are hooked. All right, we're on there, but we're not secure. So now... I would like to be able to turn this. All right, y'all. So here's the back. You can see the locking screws. Now, this TV's hanging out just a little bit. <clears throat> what I'm going to need to do is push it just off the wall so that I can pull it back. Make sure that it's locked. And then you just turn these screws up. Like so. And what's going to happen is... The screw is going to engage this plate and it's going to pull down and clamp this all in. So I'll go ahead and get the other one and then we're pretty much hung. And then the rest of it's all cosmetic. Alright y'all, so in that box you get this massive wrench. Okay, and what that wrench is for is these four nuts. Now, if you don't tighten those nuts to see what the television is doing, it's rotating forward, down and back. That allows you to adjust the angle so that it's tipped towards the seat that you're in or whatever angle you want it at. Um, I'm going to have Lisa go back over to our massive couch over there. Everything is massive. Everything is large. <laughs> and I'm going to have her tell me if this is the correct angle. And if it is, I'm going to tighten them nuts up. And that will pretty much finish up the actual hanging of this television. She's either going to give me the thumbs up or down so I know what to do. Okay, she says it's good. We're going to tighten these up. And we will be in good shape there. There's four. There's two on the other side, two on this side. We want to make sure we do all four because, again, you don't want this thing moving. So I'll tighten this up and we will proceed. 
Oh, one more thing while I'm thinking of it. You can see that the base has been removed. When you put your television up on the hanger, remove the base first. The base is extremely heavy. I didn't take the base off because I needed it standing there so I could do it alone. But when you have your friend helping you, lay your television on the ground, take the base off, and then put it up. You're leaving, you're losing approximately, I think that thing probably weighs 20, 25 pounds. So that's another little tip for you. Take that base off before you lift it up and put it up here. All right, y'all. So the next thing you would do would be hook up your cables. As you can see, it's hanging up there. It doesn't look too bad. You would um, connect your cables and run your cables down to the bottom. Now, that's if that's if you don't have a problem seeing your cables. And you, and you could stop right there, and you'd be absolutely 100% done. Your, your television would be on the wall, and you'd be great. But if you go back to the big blue store... You can get these things, and these are just an added um, accessory to clean it up and finish it up. I'm not going to show you actually how we do this, but basically the way these things work, we knew where the studs were in the wall now because of all the calculations we did before that. And what you would do is you would take these devices and you would cut a hole behind the television in the wall, run your wires through this little box. This is like a fuzzy material. You run your wires into this, into the wall, down through the wall. You would have another hole in the bottom with the other fuzzy thing on it right here. So your wires would go in, down, back out, and you'd plug them in, hiding the wires. Now, that's 100% not necessary. It's cosmetic. Uh, if you're living in a dorm or if you're somewhere renting an apartment, I know you've already put something on the wall and poked holes in the wall, but you don't really want to go knocking holes in a wall to put these things in if it's not your home. So I'm not going to show you how to do that. I might in a later video at some point, but we're going to go ahead and put these things on the wall, run the wires through, and I think that does it. I'm hoping that this video helps somebody out. I'm hoping that you all got something from this. Um, please give me a like, a share, check out some of my other videos, subscribe. Uh, it looks pretty good on the wall. Oh, one more thing I didn't show you. Let me see. I can't find my remotes. Where are my remotes? Oh, here they are. I found them. Look what we can do now. There's our remotes every evening. So there you are, folks. How to hang a TV. Give me a like, share, and a comment. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.